people out there, you're all going through something. We're all going through some kind of trial and tribulation, but the Lord doesn't want you to give up. The first scripture is 2 Chronicles 15:7. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your wor- work will be rewarded. As I say, so Evangelist Angel, why don't you open us in prayer? Just open us in prayer. Open the hearts of the people to open them so that they can just receive so much more. Lord, I ask you to anoint the ears of the people and our lips to speak what's on your heart tonight. Lord, that it would pierce the souls and, and bring healing to the people, God. That they would seek you with all of their heart, Father, because you are the one to give them out of their trial and tribulation. You are their strength. You are their peace. You are their joy. And I just thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do for your people tonight. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Oh, oh, it's on. There you go. It's on. Just why don't you keep your finger down so you can get it? Okay. Perfect. Okay. And that's so what I was going to say. So, Evangelist Lorraine, what scripture was on your mind and, and what were you feeling about tonight and the people in the audience? Well, the scripture that um, comes to me is um, actually in Romans 8:18. 8, um, it talks about the sufferings in the present time that you're in, um, and I was in those um, uh, suffering in that uh, at a time to where I even c- cried out to the Lord. Um, I didn't know what was going on, but I was actually living with somebody that was practicing something otherwise, and I was suffering. And I said, Lord, get me out of this. I was on my face. And I said, I don't understand why I can't understand the Bible. I don't understand why this is happening, because I used to be able to. And then the Lord delivered me out of them all. And it says right here in Romans 6.18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us. And that's on earth as it is in heaven, not just in heaven, but uh, on earth as well. So we we receive his glory. Um, It talks about he reveals his glory to us. So what the enemy meant for evil, uh, he does spin it around for the good, to bring glory to himself. And, and Evangelist Angela, what would you, what do you want to add to that? Do you have a testimony and what other scriptures? My testimony is back when I was 18, I was so depressed. I didn't want to live. I wanted to die. And I just lived in depression actually till I was 35, till under the presence of the Lord and the anointing, God just took all that off of me and set me free. God, you don't have to stay depressed. Let the Lord in. He'll heal every wound, every abuse you've went through. Don't get bitter. Get better. Get more of Jesus on you. And he'll just heal you and fill you and give you everything you need to, to live life the best you can on this earth. You know, one thing I wanted to add to that was, you know, one of Satan's greatest tools is to bring you into isolation. So you isolate yourself, and then you're listening to his lies, his negativity, and you start to believe that's your thoughts, that's what you are thinking, and all of a sudden you become hopeless. And so what you're talking about, Evangelist Lorraine, in your scripture, it's like, you know, the enemy wants to bring you into doubt and hopelessness, and God wants to bring us out of that pit, out of that thought process. Right. And how did, he, how did he do that in your life? Well, actually, he um, actually opened a door uh, for me to be able to get out, um, but it was, uh, it was like a suffering-type door. Um, and he uh, let me out uh, of that situation um, in, a, in a way of suffering. Um, because it says that if we uh, suffer, um, it talks about it, uh, we have the God of all grace who has called us into eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So I know that my soul was being attacked. Um, and the soul is the mind, the will, the emotions, and the intellect. So my emotions was being attacked, and I was uh, depressed. And then um, I know verbally I, I was going through verbal abuse and um, and um, the Lord just delivered me out of it. And, and he did cast down the arguments, and he made a way of escape. I mean, I actually had a man having his uh, hand on my throat, and I was scared. I was really scared. And then the next thing I know, the fear left. I said, go ahead. And, and then the next thing I know, I was let down real slowly, and then the person that was choking me was on the ground crawling away from me, and the Lord delivered me. So now and I it was wa- supernatural. 
Now, I want you in the audience to, he to really listen to something that she was saying. So you said the door. There was a door, but how did you describe that door? The door um, was, uh, was Jesus. Okay, but, yeah. but you're just, he showed like, up. what was the word? You said it was like either a difficult door or a close, like a, how did you describe that door? There was something that you said that. Yeah, uh, well, the door was closed, um, but uh, the Lord opened the door and made a way of escape. So now. He made that way. So you out there, the door, okay? Lorraine, Evangelist Lorraine had to make a choice. A door is there, but you have to make the choice to open the door. You have to make the choice to walk through that door. So she could have stayed right where she was, but she had to make choices. Choices to believe Jesus, choices to follow, okay. choices to say, I don't want to be where I'm at anymore. I want to do something different. It took choices and it took some action. That's right, and it was a type of bondage, too, and I know a lot of people uh, may be out in uh, bondage, and then you can't get out, and you don't know why or what's going on, but the Lord hears your prayers. Remember that. He will uh, pull you out of the pit. He'll pull you out. Just keep on uh, crying out to the Lord, because he who calls yeah. upon the Lord shall be saved. He'll save you. Absolutely, and so some of you out there, you might feel like there's a closed door where you can't get out of the pitch you're in. You can't get out of the hopelessness. You can't get out of, of that bondage or that sin or whatever it is that you're in. But the truth is, through Jesus, he can open that door. But you have to make the choice to want to change. You have to make the choice to open that door, and you have to make the choice to walk out of that door. So Evangelist Angela. Well, this scripture goes right along with it. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So if you decide to leave an abusive situation, don't be afraid. God will go with you. God will protect you. God will lead you. God doesn't want us abused. He wants us healed and whole and even the person, the abuser, he wants them healed and whole too. Who's ever going through something and they don't want to leave, just pray for that person that's hurting you. There is hope in God. God will set them free. You just got to keep praying and don't give up. Yeah. So, so Pastor, so Evangelist Angela, do you have like a testimony? So you're saying like you were depressed for what, 17 years or something? Yeah. But there had to have been a choice where you opened a door, you walked through a door, whether God opened that door, whether you had to open it as he put it in front of you. How did you get the strength to, to walk through that door? How did you get out of that depression? Because that's a stronghold of the enemy. How I got out of that depression, I'm not giving man the glory, but being under Pastor Benny's Hens ministry, the anointing being so strong, the presence of Jesus touched my life through that ministry, and all that stuff just fell off me as I got into worship. That is the best worship I've ever been under. That worse, they know how to worship the King, and where there's worship, there's deliverance. And I got free being under that a strong anointing. Uh, the anointing and, destroys the yoke. Yes, yeah, it got that and that's absolute. That that is the truth. And and just remember, no matter how strong that anointing is. That anointing is from God. God. Amen. Amen. It's never Amen. Oh, through yeah. a man. No. God uses men because that's the choice he makes. Because God is a relational God. He wants to use all of us. He wants us to feel his love. Yeah. He wants us to understand. But remember, everything that we do should be about glorifying Amen. God. Amen. He yes. does Amen. things. He glory. works with us so that we can do things to glorify him and praise him yes. and bring people to understand how loving and wonderful the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, Evangelist Angela, what else, what else is on your heart? Just you people that are having financial struggles, yeah, the Lord, I was having some problem a couple of years ago, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, if you trust me, I'll provide for you. So that's what you're going to have to start doing. Really trust God in your finances and providing, and make sure you're paying your tithe, because if you don't pay your 10% to wherever you 
get ministered to, you're going to lose because if we don't pay it, it'll go anyway. Well, and I think we need to, we need to kind of help balance that out for a second. Why does God want the 10%? Because he says, wherever your money is, that's where your heart's going to be. And it's he wants your heart because he doesn't want any idols in our lives. He wants to have, he is a jealous God who wants to be number one. He doesn't want to have anything else that's greater than him, whether that's your wife, whether that's your house, whether that's your kids, whether that's surfing, sports, it doesn't matter, your business, whatever it is, he wants to be number one. So he wants your heart. And so he just says, give me that and be the first fruit so that you put me first. Give me the first 10%. I'll give you the 90 and I will provide for your needs. Not every want you have because he's not Santa Claus. We're not praying to Santa Claus to give me all these needs. We're praying to have a relationship with him to be moved so our, our hearts get changed to then become like-minded with him and our hearts get molded and shaped into the image of Christ, into the thoughts of Christ so we become more like his thinking, his ways. So Evangelist Lorraine. Oh, as far as the tithe and the offerings, it um, says to give, uh, and it shall be given unto you, um, shaken down, um, pressed down, and uh, sh uh, shaken, and it'll be done for you. Um, and also, if you help the poor, uh, the Lord will uh, pay you back. And I know I have a Rite Aid story. When I was working at uh, TBN, I always listened to Paul Crouch about uh, tithe and offerings. My dad taught me, but then uh, I was under Paul Crouch um, as a prayer partner. And I went over the... Um, I actually didn't have any money to give. I, uh, I ended up making jewelry, and I ended up donating it to TBN, and I found it in the, in the uh, glass case over at TBN. And uh, then I went over to uh, Rite Aid, and I remember these batteries were like $6. And I said, Lord, I thought you said you would rebuke the devourer. And um, I said, well, I don't have $6. I have to go get the, uh, the last five I have in, the, in, in my car. So I went back to go get it. And when I went back to go get it, I came back, and then the, uh, the batteries wasn't $6 anymore. It was like a dollar and a half. I said, how did that happen? Because she scanned the same exact thing, and it went down. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, the Lord rebuked the devourer, and I wanted to, glory, yeah. to give glory to God, but there was a long line. I said, you don't understand. You don't understand. I said, it was $6 when you scanned it before, and now it's $1.50. She goes, do you want the batteries or not? I said, yeah. And then she goes, i got to help all these other people. I said, oh, glory to God, glory to God. So I went out to my car, and I was like, wow. You know, things become cheaper, you know. Yeah, they do. They really they do. do. And they, 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 they end up in your hands. And, I, and another thing, I have a computer now. Um, it was uh, $360-odd. I said, Lord, that's a lot of money just for a computer and a, uh, like an iPad thing. And it was not a, a, a you know, name brand or anything. And all of a sudden, this, uh, uh, this week, it went down all the way to 184. I said, I'll take it. And then there was another one. Uh, the guy, another guy bought it, uh, but I ended up getting the demo, and he uh, ended up getting the one that was in the box. But he took mine because he went ahead of me. And they said, oh, we'll take another 84 off. And it was only $100. Wow. That's so awesome. the Lord rebukes the devourer when we give. It, it really, he really works in our lives. He really does. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's a great testimony because you know what? He truly supplies our needs. Yes, he does. You know, and sometimes we come to him with our wants. And you know what? Sometimes he'll even give us a want because he knows our heart. He sees what's going on. He's look, But he says, I will provide for your needs. And so you know what? He knew you needed those batteries. And yes. he knew that your desire was to get that computer. And part of that is that computer might have been a want but it also is something that is you're using to enhance the kingdom to yeah. glorify him mm -hmm. to, so it changes it around if you wanted the computer just because it's something you desired for something else but when all of a sudden that comes in alignment with his will so that you're trying to do it to use something for him it's amazing how he touches things and does things that are beyond our understanding. Yes, awesome. Yeah. God so is awesome. Angela, God. What, would you, what else do you have? Uh, Mark 10, 27. Jesus, looking up to them, said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Amen. So if you think your situation is hopeless, 
no, you got to give your hope to Jesus because it's not hopeless when you give it all to him and he takes control of your life. Give him control of your life, your decisions, your everything. I won't make any decision without praying and fasting first. There, you, you don't want to make a mistake. But you will hear God. He'll talk to you audibly. He does with me every day. But I'm in it, my car all day talking to him. And so if you talk to him, he'll talk to you. You know, people go, well, why, don't I, why don't I hear him? I said, it's like a friend. If you don't talk to your friend, he's not going to talk back to you. It's the same way with the Lord. He wants you to talk to him. He, he wants to be your everything, your friend, your husband, everything, your provider, your healer. He's, uh, he's everything in one. Well, I was going to say, if you want a best friend, you have to be a best friend. So if you, if it's like with my wife. If I never bother to go home, and I never bother to talk to her, and I don't spend any time with her, and I don't communicate with her, I don't think our relationship's going to be doing very well. And she might say, I don't even know if I want to be with you anymore. Because she wants to spend time with me. She wants to talk to me. And she doesn't want me just to talk about business. She wants me to talk about what's going on in my heart. She wants me to talk about how I feel about things, relationships. She wants me to not just talk about me, but she also, what else does she want? She wants me to ask her, how are you doing? How do you feel? How was your day? Well, you know what? God is no different. He wants that same relationship. It's prayer is communicating. And communication can't be a one-way street. Communication has got to be two-way. You speak but then you need to give someone else the space to where you hear. If you never give God the space and you don't stop and listen, you're not giving him a place to speak to you, for you to hear. And that takes time. That takes training. That takes working with. But when you give him that space and that time, he will meet you there. Amen. Amen. So Evangelist Lorraine. What else is, is on your heart and on your list that you've been praying about for the show? Oh, on, on my list? Um, well, I know that the many um, are the afflictions of the righteous, um, but he delivers us out of them all, every single one of them. Uh, so if you're going through anything, know that the Lord is going to deliver you. Uh, trust him uh, and keep uh, hearing the word of God and keep the word of God beside you because Jesus is the living word. Uh, and so you want to read the word, that's Logos, and you want to hear his voice. And you ask him, Lord, speak to me, I want to hear your voice. And he will speak to you. And um, also, also, um, he's your comforter. He'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. And uh, he's not willing that uh, any uh, would perish, that uh, he will come to, to the full knowledge of the truth, because Jesus is the truth. So he wants you to know him. Uh, he, wants him to, he wants you to know him intimately, and he wants you... Um, to hear his voice. Uh, faith does come by hearing and hearing the word of God. So uh, well, I ask the Lord for the ears to hear what he's saying to me and um, I start hearing his voice. And I remember one time um, there was a, somebody that come up to me and I was uh, sitting there having a cup of coffee at like a bar stool and somebody come up behind me and just kind of looked around and says, oh yeah, it's okay if you um, uh, pray to God, but if you hear his voice, you're schizophrenic. And I started laughing. Oh I said, God. do what I said to him. Do you know what I said to him? I said, well, I, I didn't really actually say it to him, but I said it out in the air. I said, uh, but uh, there's not uh, very many people that have only a one-way conversation. I said, I think that's a little bit different in a person, you know. So you have to have a conversation. It has to be one with each other. And you get a response from one, one person, and the other person speaks, and the other person listens, and then uh, the other person speaks, and then you listen. So that's a friendship, and that's a relationship with Jesus. We hear God's voice, and we talk to him, like I'm talking to you right now. And you will be able to hear his voice. It's awesome. He's awesome. He really is. Well, and I was going to say that, that, you know what, the enemy... He speaks to us, and we can hear from him. And we have to discern. We have to understand when we're hearing negative things, that's probably from the enemy. If we're hearing positive things, it's probably from God. We have to learn to listen. And the enemy, he wants to get in there 
and get you discouraged. He wants you to be fearful. He wants you to doubt. He wants you not to trust. And God, he wants you, he's there giving you free will, giving you the choice to whether you want to believe him, whether you want to follow him. But he wants to encourage you. He wants you to know his love. You know, the show is, is loving the unlovable. Well, you know what? God loves everybody. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit love everyone equally the same. Now it's your choice, though, whether you want to receive that love, whether you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, whether you want to receive the love of the Father, whether you want to receive and have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you and guiding your life. That's your choice, and that's what he gives us. And the enemy is doing everything he can to have you choose poorly, to have you choose to reject all of God's promises, to reject his ways, to get discouraged, and to now get, in, get yourself in a place of isolation, discouragement, hopelessness, all of this. None of that is from God. The enemy wants to do that because he wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life. But Jesus comes to say, I want to give you life and give it to you more abundantly, but it's a choice. So evangelist it, Angela. It is a choice. In 1 Corinthians 16, 13, it says, Be on guard. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous and strong. Because you are going to get attacked. You're going to get attacked by on every side. And if you don't stand firm, you're going to just fall apart. And he, I felt in my spirit yesterday that there's a lot of pastors going through it. They feel like giving up their calling. But don't you dare give up your calling, you mighty men of God. God is using you, using you to mentor others, to deliver others, to give hope to others. If you give up, who are they going to look to? So stay strong in your call and don't give up because you're needed. You're, you're needed by the body of Christ. So keep your faith and, and don't let the enemy make you weary saying you're useless. You're not useless. There's many that have been touched under your ministries and under your life. Amen. Yeah. Keep going for God. Amen. Win more souls for the king. And that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So we're commanding every condemning devil that's coming against you in your life to leave in Jesus Christ's name. And that he'll give you an answer for those who try to reproach you. Uh, that answer will come from the Lord. It'll be from him not of yourself, that the power of God may be of him and not of you. Well, and I was going to say, you know, we do need to be courageous. We do need to have faith. We do need to stand strong. But you also have to balance that with, don't be courageous with your strength. It's you need to be courageous trusting in his strength. You, if you try to fight the enemy with your strength in your ways, the enemy is going to do a number on you. But when you come with God's strength, when you're courageous and understand that you're trusting in him, when you're walking in faith, trusting in him, believing in him, that's when he comes because he has already won the battle. On the cross, Jesus already paid that Amen. price. So he has already won the victory. You're coming from victory when you're trusting in him, courageous in him, believing in what he's done, and that's where you're coming from, not understanding that you're just trying to do it by your will, by your might, but it's by his will and his might. So Evangelist Angela. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The Lord will give you rest from from the battle he says take my yoke for my yoke is easy and my burden is light so take his yoke and his burden and then what you're going through won't even matter because God will be your strength let God be your strength in your battle I just feel like Evangelist Angela would you just pray for a minute for the for the audience for depression to break yes, depression yes, I want you to pray bit. and then I want to finish I want to finish it out in prayer I Amen. feel like there's Amen. something yes. we need to pray for here first of all I come against the spirit of depression in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth the generational curse of depression I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth from Amen. everybody out in that audience 
You cannot touch God's people. They are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Depression, go. Fear, go. Anxiety, go. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus, for setting the captives free tonight. Thank you, Lord, that they, they don't have to be depressed. They can be filled with your joy and your peace. But total peace is only with you as their Savior. So, Lord, I ask you, people... To receive Jesus tonight, say, Lord, you died on the cross for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. I receive you in my heart as my Lord and Savior. And that's true deliverance from depression, having him as your all in all. He's all we need. He's our strength. He's our peace. He's everything. Make him your everything. Make him your best friend. And he will be your best friend. You won't feel alone ever. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Yeah, and I just feel, yes, we can pray. We can pray, but you have to accept Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus is stronger and greater than any name in this world. Any name, anything that's going on. So if you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I just say, receive him into your heart. Just say, Jesus I want you as my Lord and Savior. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I just, if you have depression, just say right now, in Jesus' name, depression go. You take authority over it in the name of Jesus. You take authority of it by the blood of Jesus Christ. We just say hopelessness go in Jesus' name. Depression go in Jesus' name. We just say, Heavenly Father, let your love, let your love just penetrate into their hearts. Just yes. fill their hearts. Fill their hearts and just push out the depression. Just push out the hopelessness. Just push out all of the, anything that's in there, the, any hate, any anger, anything that's negative. And we just speak right now that if there's anyone that you have not forgiven of something they've done to you, forgive them now. And I want to speak to a lot of you. You need to forgive yourself. That doesn't mean that Jesus hasn't forgiven you, but you have to receive Jesus' forgiveness for the choices you've made. You need to be able to say, Jesus, I receive your forgiveness doesn't matter the choices you've made. It doesn't matter the things that you've done. He just says, receive the forgiveness and forgive yourself and then make your choices. Just like, just like Evangelist Lorraine had to make a choice of a door to be able to get out and be able to be free. Evangelist Angela had to make a choice to move out and get out from behind that door of depression. And you know what? The same thing for some of you out there, whether that's hopelessness, whether that's sexual sin, whether that's whatever it is, none of them are greater than another one. The only sin that's unforgivable is rejecting Jesus Christ. Everything else, the blood of Jesus Christ can, t can take care of. It doesn't matter what you've done. But he also says, change. Change, repent, go the other direction, Receive me, receive my love, and make the choice to follow me and know the Word of God. Understand the Word of God. Understand this is the owner's manual. And we just pray that you'll have an amazing week in Jesus Christ, that your relationship will be, come greater this week, and just walk in that freedom, standing in that freedom, believing the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.